Welcome back to Master Glass. I am your host, Livio. I'm excited because today I'm gonna to make you two different versions of the Hemingway Daiquiri Y2. This is the older version. This is the newer version as we drink it today, but let's get into it. What is there to be said about the Hemingway Daiquiri? Well, actually, <laughs> a lot. As I've been researching this topic, I even purchased a vintage cocktail book from 1939, La Cuna del Daiquiri. Uh, it comes to see that there's really a lot of variations, twists, and turns to this cocktail. Uh, let's talk about the daiquiri itself for a quick second. So in the Cuna del Daiquiri book, there's five daiquiris, and then there's also a E. Hemingway special, which was I guess the Ernest Hemingway uh, cocktail special. Now, what does Hemingway have to do with the daiquiri? Well, I'm gonna make two drinks and I'm gonna tell you the story as I make it. The first uh, drink I'm gonna make is an older version of the daiquiri. It's actually the one that is listed in the cocktail book under E. Hemingway. And it's kind of wonky, but I'm just interested in bringing it to you just to show you a little bit about how the evolution of this drink came to be. And then the second version of the Hemingway daiquiri that I'm going to make for you is actually the classic version that we know it to be today. More the modern version, I should say, rather than the classic. So in this shaker tin right here, I'm gonna go ahead and put crushed ice because that's what the drink called for. Now this one here is frappéed and, and in some cases people will say, that this drink was put in a blender, but in the book that I was reading, it was shaken with crushed ice, not a lot, and hence that's how the frappe came to be. And so then in this shaker over here instead, because this is the modern version, I'm gonna just put regular ice, just like that. Okay, so let's start. Version number one, we're gonna take three ounces of denizen rum. Why? Because Ernest Hemingway liked his daiquiri high in alcohol, lower in sugar. He more than likely liked it that way because he liked to drink a lot. He didn't wanna have a lot of alcohol and with it come a lot of sugar. So he requested his daiquiri to bartender Constante Ribalaya from El Floridita who was a legendary uh, bartender at the time, he requested for his daiquiri to have more alcohol and less sugar. So let's take a look at this. By the way, I am using Denizen rum. Denizen is awesome. It is a rum blend of basically 80% Trinidadian rum, column still, uh, aged up to five years, which is neutral, easy drinking style but then it's blended with a more flavorful 20% uh, of a Jamaican style rum, which is gonna have boost a lot of flavors in this product. What are those flavors gonna be? You're gonna get some ripe banana, some grassiness, that funk that you can appreciate in a very cool rum. So we're gonna go ahead and put three ounces. Again, we are doubling up the alcohol in this one. The word out there was that Ernest uh, was called Papa uh, around Cuba simply because he had the gray beard and it was a uh, it was a, uh, a friendly way to call him that and uh, because he liked his uh, daiquiri to have more rum in it hence double uh, the Papa Doble cocktail was born. I also think that that's actually because he double fisted. He was said to drink seven, sometimes 12, sometimes even 16, I believe, of these in one day. I think he just double fisted. That's better story if you ask me. Now in this here, I'm going to put one teaspoon, which is what is listed in the book. Luckily a teaspoon is one bar spoon. They're the same amount of Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. Now, what is Luxardo Maraschino? First and foremost, let's talk about the spelling. Maraschino, I should say, the pronunciation. Maraschino. C-H in Italian is K. And Luxardo Maraschino is an iconic brand. This, the producer, Luxardo, 
is an iconic producer. They make all sorts of stuff. You can find their Peter Bianco, you can find their limoncello, uh, you can find their, their various different liqueurs. Uh, but this one here is their gem. This one here is what they're most popular for. Marasca cherries are harvested during the summer. They are soaked in alcohol. When it's time, the marasca cherries and the alcohol are distilled. And then after that, the which will give a dry flavor, right? It won't give a big cherry flavor. It will give a more dry flavor. And then some simple syrup is added in order to incre the, increase a little bit of the sweetness with some water to decrease the alcohol content. What is the final flavor here? It's going to be something that's gonna be honey-like, floral and, and flavor, a little bit of nuttiness and just very, very unique. Now in this drink as well, in the book was also mentioned one teaspoon or bar spoon of ruby red grapefruit juice. Now you don't wanna be cheap on this one. Ruby red grapefruit juice always means fresh ruby red grapefruit juice, never the store-bought stuff. Okay, now to this, we also are going to add a half of lime because the book calls for a half of a lime. And there we go. Okay. Now I'm gonna set this right here just for a second before I shake it, move it out of the way. And in this cocktail here, the modern version, I'm going to add two ounces of the lovely denizen rum. That is also known as 60 milliliters. And just the aroma that I'm getting from the denizen is incredible. Uh, what a smart blend to take a neutral style rum and add a flavorful uh, component to it in about 20% because what you're gonna get is you're really gonna get the best of both worlds. You're gonna get the, all the benefits of a clear rum, but all the flavor tastiness of those more aged funky style rums. Uh, obviously it's charcoal filtered to give it uh, still that uh, clear color. To this, we're gonna add a quarter of an ounce in the modern version of Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. Just like that. Okay. And in this case here, I'm not going to squeeze the lime. I'm gonna just use fresh lime juice because the modern recipe just calls for a half an ounce. So half an ounce of fresh lime juice, please, fresh, to go just like that. Okay. And then last but not least, a half an ounce, again, fresh please, of ruby red grapefruit. Okay. And I believe that's it. This one here is gonna, we're gonna give it immediately a shake. and a strain. Oh yeah. Okay. And this one here, it's more of a whip shake. That's why there's crushed ice in it. They're looking for something more for a frappe style. Uh, again, some versions call it to be in the blender, but the book does not say the blender. It says shake, so I'm gonna shake. Now the glass it's served in is kind of interesting because one wouldn't expect a daiquiri in a highball, but from my research, this is how it went. So there you go. Now, neither the E. Hemingway special coming from the book, nor the Hemingway daiquiri, the way we know it today, had a garnish in it. So I'm gonna stay true to that. And I'm going to doble fist and enjoy.
Uh, just the aroma, just sh this shows, showcases the quality of denizen rum because it is popping banana herbaceous, a little bit of vanilla or caramel, but more like a fig sweetness. So good. Mm. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm. So I must say the reason why this drink is good is because the rum is good because it's basically rum and lime. I can't taste any of the other ingredients in it. And luckily that funkiness of the denizen is coming through and it's actually really tasty because the rum is tasty, but it is an unbalanced cocktail. It's why we always say that drinks from the past aren't necessarily uh, as delicious as the more modern versions. Which brings me to the more modern version of the Hemingway daiquiri served up. Oh, whole, whole other ball game. Whole other ball game here. In this version here, the maraschino gets to play a little better. It gets to show up and I'm getting those honey floral um, nutty notes from the maraschino. I get the ruby grapefruit just a tad, but enough to be part of the game and the lime juice as well. Of course, big part of the game with the rum pushing everything up. Such a balanced cocktail. Um, I have heard that at times people will add a half an ounce of maraschino uh, versus a quarter of an ounce. I am absolutely enjoying it this way, but I can see that if you add another quarter of an ounce, you'll get a little bit more of that maraschino component to it, which you could enjoy if that is your flavor, meaning honey, nutty, floral. But I'm gonna take another sip. And I just must say it, and I know it's almost sacrilegious to say that this version is better than the original daiquiri because the original daiquiri is iconic. But let's just say it, this just has a lot more going on. Rather than rum, lime, sugar, it has rum, grapefruit juice, it has maraschino, and those, and lime juice, of course. Those ingredients there just give a lot more oomph to the cocktail. So I really enjoyed that and I hope you enjoyed this episode as well. If you did, why don't you go ahead and give it a like? And if you wanna take our relationship to the next level, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to Master Glass with me, Livio Laro, where you get expert instruction for everyday consumption.